Welcome, everybody. This is JSA's new series called JSA Fast Forward, where we broadcast live via LinkedIn. So welcome, folks. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, CEO and founder of JSA. And with me is my fabulous co-host, my dear, dear friend and longtime colleague, Mr. Dean Perrine. He's our overall guru here at JSA for client strategy and lead gen marketing. Hey, Dean. Hey, Jay, how are you? It's so good to see you, even if it's just virtually. I know, I'm, I'm connecting with you, sending vibes through the, uh, through the internet. I feel you, Captain, I feel you. And I am very, very excited to be on this live show today with you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's very live. So guys, <laughs> if, uh, if you hear us make any mess ups or, you know, be the humans that we are, uh, you know, it's live, so... <laughs> If a dog barks or somebody sneezes or children start to do the river dance uh, just above us or any, whatever, you, you will excuse us. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> and we should say our script writers are busy writing for clients. So yeah, we're here bantering freely. So who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, it's scary. Um, I'm Frankly, I was shocked that they're letting us do this together. Uh, absolutely. So, <laughs> but thank goodness to guide us along, keep us a little focused. We have torn out some big headlines happening in our industry as we wrap up this crazy, crazy year known as 2021. So let's get to it. Dean, what are the headlines catching your attention today? Yeah, the first one uh, is from Redline Communications. They are, they continue to support the oil and gas sector with their award-winning virtual fiber solutions. That's correct, virtual fiber solutions. Uh, following a series of recent contract wins across the Middle East and India, Redline is now selected to provide advanced connectivity solutions for a large petroleum exploration and production company operating in the Gulf of Thailand. And again, this is the, the they're using their new virtual fiber across 27 wellheads for secure and reliable high-speed connectivity in these distant isolated locations made to stand up against tough environmental conditions. The biggest thing for this one, for me, Jamie, was that the, the whole concept of virtual fiber is a relatively new concept to me. So it was one thing that I definitely needed to dig into a little bit before, uh, before we went live today. Yeah, and Redline has been killing it with their, their virtual fiber. This is a headline I've seen uh, several times from them uh, this year, uh, really um, using this virtual fiber to connect in these very isolated or uh, dangerous locations. Uh, so oil and gas industry, uh, clearly a, a, a good one for them as well. Um, and there's a theme, right? So we have India, Middle East connectivity. As I'm going through these headlines, you know, we're talking rapid digital growth and soaring demand for high quality colo, what we like to hear, um, and particularly in this region. Um, turning over now to server farm, uh, yeah, the headline says, that uh, they just announced the development of ISR3, its first hyperscale data center in central Israel, set to launch uh, next year, the latter half of 2022. So ISR3, their Israeli data center, uh, going to be bringing nine megawatts of critical capacity to Israel's accelerating digital economy. ISR3, you know, really catering to those hyperscalers and large enterprises with edge capabilities needing secure, scalable environments. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm seeing a theme here. Um, Middle East, uh, really, a, a, um, a, an, an economy to, to be watching right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that I, I am noticing across uh, my accounts is a, an international play. It doesn't matter who you are or where your uh, what your origin story might be, whether it be in the States or whether it be in another country, there is this trend towards uh, kind of a globalization of the uh, of the entire industry, you know what I mean? So it's just like everybody is connected in some ways, giving most people um, uh, an international play. So you're hearing a lot of that in 2021. I suspect we'll, we'll probably see 
as uh, a lot of that in 2022. Uh, obviously, it doesn't stop in the Middle East. Connectivity needs across Hong Kong and throughout Asia Pacific um, are at an all-time high as well. Um, as a result, to enable more robust connectivity options in its Hong Kong data centers, uh, BDX, Asia Pacific's premier data center co-location and hybrid cloud solutions provider, formed a new agreement with China Telecom. We've all heard of them. Um, as one of the world's largest providers of integrated telecommunications services, China Telecom will now deliver its expanded local, global, and trans-China network coverage services to BDX's Hong Kong, that's HKG1, and HKG2 facilities, two of Hong Kong's leading data centers. So again, a lot more, um, you know, the, the Middle East, Asia PAC, again, all big, uh, big in the news today, but, you know, we were talking about uh, Europe just a month ago. So again, this, this trend toward globalization of, or, you know, in, an internationalization, did I just make up a new word, uh, of, of services is really happening. Yeah. And you know what, Hong Kong, really interesting, uh, specifically as it's one of the world's top financial hubs, really a stable economic environment, making it just an ideal destination, particularly for financial institutions, as well as, of course, our, our growing tech companies. Because we, we need that that world class colo and connectivity, but in a secure, stable economic environment, Hong Kong's Hong Kong's where it's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, with uh, I've been working with uh, the Edge Connects team for for many years now, and they just they just literally this week. Now, granted, I was on PTO, uh, which is great for my birthday. Happy birthday to me! Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but while I was out, um, I did see that uh, they made an announcement about uh, an investment, a strategic investment in Cheora, which is a leading data center provider in China. So again, Hong Kong, China, uh, Asia Pac, big, big, big right now. Yeah, and that, that's really strategic. I, I was I was looking at that headline too, and and it's just kind of perfect for both companies, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a partnership that provides edge connects with data center offerings in Beijing and Shanghai, of course, two of China's largest markets, and and then the ability to really scale out the Chayora's platform to other major markets throughout mainland China. So really. You know, again, you were talking worldwide globalization. Now, now it's it's a worldwide platform uh, for customers with hyper local edge capacity needs or hyper scale capacity, and and, and there's also that built to suit uh, a flexibility built in there too. So, so really a, a, an interesting and exciting move for Edge Connects uh, right now. Yeah, that train keeps on moving at uh, at breakneck speed right now for, for Edge Connect. So uh, yeah, good on them. I'm sure our friend uh, uh, Philip over there probably would like to take a moment to just take a deep breath. Uh, but we'll talk about him in just a moment as well. Um, but what you know, something you you said kind of made me think of a webinar that I was uh, that I sat in on uh, by Zenlayer uh, and their. Uh, uh, Carlos Morel, I think that's how that's how you say his last name. Um, but you know, he was talking about it's not just financial and tech companies, but media and content companies are big players right now too. And not even in just tier one markets. It used to be that you know the tier one markets when we were talking about these types of players, that's kind of where they live. But with streaming and gaming platforms taking off, uh, specifically, I did not want to say this word on on uh, the, on this uh, on this stream, but uh, specifically with uh, the pandemic pandemic and the reality, uh, the new reality, for lack of a, 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 a better cliche, um, there's a, you know, tremendous uh, tremendous growth opportunities for for media and entertainment uh, in these emerging markets, including China and India and Southeast Asia. Um, you know, there's 12 what 12.8 billion end users currently. 12.8 billion with a B uh, end users looking for this kind of content. So, and that's not slowing down anytime soon. Ow. I know it's a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of end users. Um, and yeah, I agree. Zenlayer did a great job with that webinar. Carlos um, had some staggering uh, data points that uh, I think are, are worthy of mentioning. Um, he said that um, also that the emerging market users, all those folks, 
um, 12.8 billion end users, they're often early adopters too. So they're the, they're the folks that are using their cell phones and other mobile devices to access media and entertainment. You know, that's actually more prevalent in these emerging markets. So yeah, they're um, the you and I of these other markets. <laughs> really interesting. And, and, you know, quoting that webinar, 663 million with an M, new mobile internet users are expected to emerge through 2025 in this Asia PAC region alone. So yeah, uh, by the way, awesome webinar to check out uh, by Zenlayer. And Zenlayer will be at PTC, one of our 25 clients attending. We've got a whole slew of them, China Telecom America, a, a gazillion of them, um, but uh, yeah. Um, and so you know who will not be there, Jay? Me. Because yeah. because because I don't get to go to Hawaii, but I understand that you will be going to Hawaii. Sorry, I took the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I, and, and right now with this new variant, it's all fingers crossed, right? Um, but yes, we are hoping to have um, four of us JSAers going down to fabulous Honolulu, uh, and we will be doing that that fabulous JSA TV media partnership with PTC. Thank you. Um, to our team and theirs for setting that up, uh, which means we will be recording interviews uh, with industry thought leaders. Um, what's their news? Why now? Who does it impact? And then we're going to be sharing those little video interviews across both our PTC as well as JSA platforms and, and you know, sharing it amongst those, uh, those communities, which should really be amazing. Um, but you know, you're not just staying home, Dean. We're, we're going to send you to Florida just shortly thereafter, right? That's correct. I will be going to Metro Connect at the end of January. I want to say it's the 31st through the 2nd of February um, in, in Miami. And I, too, will be recording uh, JSC TVs and uh, interested in networking with you, our, our viewers, while I am there. Um, so definitely hit us up at, and this is my favorite, my favorite uh, email address that we have at JSA, say hi, that is say hi, S-A-Y-H-I, at jsa.net. If you or somebody you know would like to meet with uh, with either Jamie at PTC or myself at uh, Metro Connect, we would love to meet with you uh, and perhaps record a JSA TV video with you. Yeah, and same deal there where um, uh, like PTC, we share it with the PTC community. On those JSA TV interviews you will be shooting at Metro Connect will also be shared with the capacity community. So right. loving that, that media um, uh, crossover. Um, and this gets us back to stateside. I think we've been out uh, exploring Asian headlines. So uh, bringing it back here in the US in our data center telecom realm, I was just reading about data bank making some more moves down south, down in Texas. Yeah, uh, you know, I saw that too. Uh, and every time I think of Texas, I think about how the number of JSAers that actually are in Texas now. Um, mm -hmm. It, it, it feels it feels like a lot, you know, Vanessa, Brianna, um, there's probably others that, um, but uh, the, Texas for sure is seeing a significant economic boom, particular, particularly in the uh, the tech sector. Maybe it's because they got all that space to bring in those uh, those 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 technology companies. But um, obviously, it's due in large part to their business friendly climate, uh, which has spurred a high number of. Uh, of tech companies and overall companies into the state. So yeah, we're, we're you know, Texas is is where it's at right now, I think. Yeah, Elon Musk was just in the headlines quoted as saying Tesla's new vehicle factory that they brought to Austin now going to be a 10 billion with a B dollar investment over time. So great news for Texas. California is probably a little sad, uh, but yeah, it was a, a, a brilliant move um, for, for Tesla, of course, and, and great for Texas and, and Texas taxpayers, right? Yeah, it, it totally makes sense. Uh, the state is, is really kind of going for it with favorable tax policies, uh, central location, which makes traveling from coast to coast uh, a breeze. So um, it does kind of make sense. Maybe some of them will, uh, will come to, to Indiana too sometime soon. Yeah, um, well, being a pro-business climate helps, you know, um, and uh, and Texas is doing it right. So a lot of states can absolutely take some uh, some notes there. Um, and getting back to our data bank headline, talk about being in the right place at the right time and knowing it, leveraging it. The company uh, is expanding its Dallas-Fort Worth data center DFW3 yet again 
that's I think the fourth expansion so far for DFW3. That's an additional 22,000 square feet of space and three megawatts more of power. Now we're talking up to 40 megawatts of total power from diverse utility feeds. So uh, unbelievable space and unbelievable location, location, location. Uh, this build out, uh, I think they're projecting completion in Q2 of 2022, so coming soon. Yeah, it seems like data bank was in the news uh, every time I looked at the news. Uh, <laughs> so they were they're definitely one to watch in 2022, especially with the uh, the Zicolo acquisition from Zeo. Data bank is the largest privately owned edge data center provider in the U.S. in terms of geographic coverage and number of facilities. So they too are uh, in a big growth mode right now. Yeah, we're talking 60 plus data centers for mm -hmm. data bank and 20 in to connection hubs in more than 30 metro markets. So yeah, they're um, killing it right now. You know, again, we, you can't you can't not hear about data bank in the news lately. And we should say we kind of have some hot news breaking here in our live event. So if you guys couldn't wait to get to this part, could you, Jay? I love this part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you're hearing it first. Uh, um, so we have Raul Martinek, of course, Data Bank CEO. Um, and we should also mention Philip Marangella, the CMO of, of Edge Connects, as well as 18 other amazing thought leaders, breaking news all the time, folks, um, who will be co authoring our chapters in Greener Data. Greener Data. Oh. Um, yeah, we're really excited. This is our JSA book which we will be launching on Earth Day, April 22nd, 2022. And we are uh, so um, blessed because we've been asking our industry's top innovators like Raul, like Philip, to commit to a chapter, uh, how we can work together, how we can innovate, how we can really um, change the earth, um, uh, let technology uh, help us to decrease carbon emissions. And you know, I've been very excited, very blessed um, with the, just the uh, the amazing response to to our uh, our invitation to to co-author these this book with us. Um, so amazing leaders again, like Raul and Philip, who have stepped up to say yes, I'm in. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's interesting because we've been talking a lot about <clears throat> kind of expansion and international uh, and international plays amongst many of our clients. But the other thing um, that is you cannot you cannot dismiss is that it, it, it is all kind of happening with an eye toward sustainability, with an eye towards things like diversity and inclusion, with an eye toward being good, responsible companies. Uh, and, you know, from our seat as, as marketers, um, that's a good thing, you know. So um, we're looking for Forward, you know, to kind of really digging in, digging in in 2022, um, and doing some 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 great things for not just for the, you know the business world, but for for our planet. So that's good, um, and then paying that forward. So a lot of growth in the sector, and a lot of giving back in 2022 with so many great and well deserved recognitions, particularly in this time of year. Yeah, and you know what? Talking recognitions, we, we got to mention, uh, of course, Dean. You know, I'm a very proud. I Mason Infrastructure Masons member, and we just had our I Masons award ceremony like a few days ago. And uh, by the way, Dean Nelson and crew killing it. Those virtual events are such a high caliber. It's 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 we praise you. Um, so, but yes, watching that I Masons award ceremony made me really happy. They they really gave some very notable, well deserved recognitions. And uh, you want to take this? Uh, no, I, it's uh, I couldn't wait to get to this part because, uh, frankly, um, one of one of my uh, one of my one of my favorites, Edge Connects, as you know, had a had a had a nice sweep there. So, um, and specifically, a name that I don't often get to get to kind of really promote in the news is is Angela Capone uh, at Edge Connects. Uh, she's their marketing director, um, and I have loved every second of working with Angela. Um, but she was honored for her work in leading grassroots roots initiative women connects that grew uh, into a company and industry-wide opportunity <clears throat> excuse me for women to share experiences opportunities collaboration and teamwork inside global high technology 
organization. So, and, uh, you know, Angela is a bit of a trailblazer. There were plenty that came, you know, before her that were kind of like mapping this out. But uh, this, this Women Connects initiative is, is really something to watch in 2022. I'm very, very proud to be uh, a part of that with her. Yeah, Women Connects. Yay, we've been so, uh, so honored to watch that take off. Just amazing. Uh, particularly, you know, post pandemic, I know we're trying to not say the pandemic word, but <laughs> it, it, there's, there is a new, uh, a new way of connecting these days. And it's difficult, you know, it's, it's hard, we, we need to find strength and inspiration from one another, virtually, and that's challenging. Um, and so I found Women Connects to be just a, a phenomenal, phenomenal initiative and at a perfect time. And we're all looking to uh, to seek out um, role models and, and mentors and support and, you know, listening ears. Um, so yeah, Women Connects, I'm really proud that uh, it was, it, and Angela, uh, trailblazing with Women Connects, as you said. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really been great to kind of see uh, this very human element kind of rise above the pandemic right now. It's, uh, it's been nice um, because things like sustainability and, you know, uh, green energy and diversity and inclusion, all those kind of like fundamentally human uh, things that don't go away simply because we're in a pandemic. In fact, you could argue that they accelerate perhaps during a pandemic. Um, you know, one of the things again uh, with Edge Connects, I know I, I sound like I'm uh, a kick in a horse right now. Uh, I know you love horses, Jamie, so I apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, Edge Connects, you know, to add to the I Masons award uh, sweep, there Philip Mount Marangello, who we've we've discussed, their CMO took home the highly coveted 2021 I Masons Diversity and Inclusion Champion Award, uh, which is well deserved. Philip, congratulations to you on that. And Philip has been really empowering and providing opportunities for young people, women, veterans, and those from diverse backgrounds to receive the training, resources, guidance, and support that they need in this industry to to not just uh, get into the industry, but quite literally to thrive within the industry. So uh, congratulations again on that, Philip. Yeah, and speaking personally, Philip's been a mentor to me over the years. He he really has been a champion of, of our work here at JSA. And it's just, he's a friend, you know, and, and he's one of those rare special people who makes all of us feel connected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think anyone who knows him feels like, they're friends with him, that they're, they're connected with him. It's a, it's a really special quality. You know what I mean? Um, oh, absolutely. Definitely. You know, working with him, you know, weekly, sometimes daily, uh, it is, it is clear that he is operating uh, on, a, on a plane where everyone is an equal, everyone is, has a voice. Uh, and it's, it's really been great. Yeah. We all matter and together we can. And, and that's a really powerful, uh, powerful mantra, a uh, powerful thing to, to make people feel around you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right. And oh, we cannot forget his capstone project. I see this in my notes and I'm like, we should talk about this too. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Philip also is kind of the, uh, he's at kind of at the helm of the bobsled with regard to a ca capstone project that is aimed at uh, training, mentoring, and recruiting a more diverse workforce, that DNI stuff that we were talking about just a moment ago. Uh, in collaboration with the Infrastructure Masons and other organizations, Edge Connects partners with historic, uh, historical Black colleges and universities to encourage, encourage participation in STEM programs and create a pipeline of diverse candidates for internships and full-time Position. So again, this capstone project is really kind of part and parcel to uh, what Philip has been doing apparently in his free time. I'm not entirely sure uh, when he gets all of this stuff done, but he does. I don't, so again, I don't, I don't think he sleeps, but yes, his problem. efforts on this capstone project, very well recognized at the award ceremony too. And he was also named a joint winner of the 2021 Education Champion Award. So yes, sweep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, okay, so I'm, I'm at the end of mine. One, okay, one more thing, uh, connected to fiber just today, this is an hour ago, uh, announced that, um, where did, where's the, yeah, line? there I mean, it is. Yeah, we're yeah. way to end a year. Can you believe yeah, it? 1.4 billion locations being yeah. managed across 147 country. So what this is, is their connected world or SaaS platform is, is, is managing um, 1.4 
billion locations, providing insight transparency into 1.4 billion locations as far as um, network um, availability into those locations. So what does that do for network buyers and sellers? It basically provides an ecosystem for them to communicate in a way that gives them direct access and visibility into what exists, what doesn't exist. So there's go-to-market ramifications for them there. There's certainly partnership uh, opportunities there. And obviously for them uh, fulfilling end user customer bids, this provides a very streamlined an automated way of, of getting that job done. So uh, highly efficient. And so can, uh, congratulations, Connected Fiber, on 1.4 billion, with a B, locations managed across 147 different countries. Congratulations to you on that. Uh, Brilliant. And you know what I should say? Connected to Fiber, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, again, we're riffing, right? Uh, but they, want, they got on the Inc. 5000 list this year. Um, along with JSA. Um, so uh, yeah, and, and particularly notable because uh, it was comparing pandemic uh, 2020 um, to, to the growth uh, in the last three years uh, previously. So, um, uh, you know, the, uh, that's, that's unbelievable really on um, that, um, that even in a pandemic, uh, companies like Connected to Fiber, JSA, uh, companies supporting our, our industry, uh, of course, other companies in our industry, um, really, um, really still growing. Um, and uh, uh, this is, of course, uh, private companies, uh, the fastest private companies growing in the U.S. Uh, to get on that Inc. 5000 list. But what an incredible accomplishment when you think about um, how much the pandemic has changed the way that we do business and how, how our industry, how our community, how connectivity is really um, allowing us to still connect, uh, you know, get, get business done, learn, um, be entertained, uh, but also still, still meet each other in this virtual reality um, and, and still feel like um, we can still be human together. Uh, so anyway, uh, unbelievable way to end 2021. Uh, success even amongst this crazy pandemic. Cheers everyone to a healthier, happier 2022 together. We here at JSA will be connecting you with more industry news and trends, upcoming events, virtual and live, across our blogs, newsletters, virtual roundtables, podcasts, and now via LinkedIn Live to keep us all more informed so we can grow this industry together. Absolutely. So thanks for turning, tuning into our very first or inaugural JSA Fast Forward. And before uh, before I kick it back over to you, Jamie, let me just say how uh, fortunate that JSA is to have you as our leader. Um, you have shown us the, uh, the right way, even in the most uh, brutal of storms. Um, and I cannot thank you enough for being such a, a great mentor uh, to me, leader of JSA, and overall great person and friend. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Dean. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, uh, community, for supporting JSA. We're celebrating our 17 years uh, birthday, January 1st, too. Um, so uh, I don't think you could have done this without um, one, of course, our team, folks like Dean and, and uh, so many us, of us here at JSA who, um, who go, go the distance and, and really dig in and, and do well because of the love of the job and of our clients and of our industry. But thank you, industry, for just always supporting us and, and, and listening in, tuning in. Uh, really, it's a, it's a time where you count your blessings and um, we've, we've been very blessed. We have so many blessings. Um, so thank y'all. And as always, please stay safe. See you at PTC Metro Connect and many more hopeful, uh, hopeful good, good celebrations to come. And as always, happy networking. <laughs>